Hello everybody, my name is Martin Kleppmann and today I would like to talk about conflict-free replicated data types for lists, also known as sequences or arrays. And so more concretely, what I would like to talk about is how we can take elements of a list and reorder them, i.e. to move them from one position to a different position. So let me first start with a bit of motivation for why we want to reorder elements in lists in the first place, and then I will talk about an algorithm in, with which we can do that. So let's say we want to draw a smiley face using some graphics software. And the way graphics software renders a, something like a face here is in layers. So you might start with the bottom layer, which is a big yellow circle, which is the uh, background, the face. And then on top of that, you might have a curved line for the mouth, and you might have two little black circles for the eyes. And now let's say you decide that, well, you'd actually like to have some white border around the eyes as well. So you also draw some white circles, but oh no, now the white circles have ended on top of the black circles. So now they're covered up, you can't see the pupils in the eyes anymore. What we wanted was this picture here, where you have the black circles on top of the white circles and the white circles on top of the big yellow circle for the face. So what we have here really in the graphic software is this list or this stack of layers that are uh, layered one on top of each other at the bottom you have the face and then the mouth and then the pupils and then the eyes and what we want to do is to reorder this list so we want to take the pupils and move them all the way to the top of this list while the white circles for the eyes are moved down relative to the pupils so what we have here is inside the graphic software you've got this list uh, of graphical objects and we want to be able to reorder that list and so for example in powerpoint uh, and many other graphic software, there's this function called bring to front or something like that, which will take the selected element you've got and reorder it in this stack of layers to be on top of the other items in that scene here. So this in graphic software is one example where you might want reordering of list elements. A different example where you might want to reorder list elements is in a to-do list. So in a to-do list, often you can drag and drop items and dragging and dropping items means you can reorder them so that, for example, the, the highest priority tasks are at the top, the things you want to do first are at the top of the list. And in this example, let's say uh, we've got a to-do list containing firstly buy milk, secondly watering the plants, thirdly phoning Joe, and the user reorders this list, moving a phone Joe to be at the top of the list. So buy milk and watering the plants become two and three elements respectively. Okay, doing this on a single copy of a to-do list is straightforward. What we are interested in, of course, in distributed systems is how we can do this with multiple replicas. And so we can have multiple replicas um, of this list that live on different devices. And these different replicas now can be represented using a CRDT algorithm such as root or treedoc or logroot or RGA or LSEQ or any of these others. And, um, and this, uh, this CRDT allows multiple replicas to modify the list concurrently. Now, most of these CRDTs, in fact, all of these CRDTs allow a list to be modified by deleting items from the list and by inserting new items at any position in the list. What they do not have is some functionality for reordering items. Now, we could say, okay, we can emulate uh, reordering of items by just deleting the item we want to move from its old position and reinserting it at its new position. So let's think about what happens if we do this deleting and reinserting. Well, here in this case, we've got two replicas concurrently moving the same list item. So both of the replicas delete phone Joe from position three, okay? Deleting an item twice is the same as deleting it once. So therefore, uh, phone Joe is definitely no longer present at position three. Now, replica A inserts, reinserts phone Joe at the head of the list and replica B also reinserts phone Joe at the head of list. So we have two insertions of the item phone Joe, and you can see where this is going. The outcome is now we have the phone Joe item duplicated. So we now have two copies of the phone Joe to-do list item because the deletion and reinsertion happening twice concurrently just inevitably leads to this kind of duplication. And I argue this is not what we want of a list. Really, we want just because an item gets moved, we don't expect it to get duplicated. Uh, especially not if there are just two users on different devices concurrently performing the same operation, moving the same item to the same position. 
Well, so, so what, what do we want to have happen in this case? Let's say here, I've changed the example slightly. Now, uh, replica A moves phone Joe to the head of the list, while replica B mo moves phone Joe to be underneath by milk. And so there's a conflict between these two operations. They're moving the same item to two different positions. And we don't want the item to appear at both destination positions because that would mean duplicating the item. So really what we want the algorithm, the CRDT to do is as these replicas converge, we want to pick one of the positions as the destination position of this moved item. So we want to pick one of the destination positions arbitrarily but deterministically. In this case here, the algorithm has picked the higher position as uh, the final merged outcome of the two replicas. Um, it would be equally just as good to have the, the middle position as the final merged outcome, but it just has to be deterministic and they all have to converge towards the same final list. Now, this idea of picking something arbitrarily but deterministically will probably be quite familiar to those of you who are uh, who have been looking at CRDTs for a while because it's exactly what happens in a last writer wins register. So in a last writer wins register, you've got several uh, replicas concurrently updating the same register and what we want is for only one of those concurrently written values to be the final the final value. And so we can here imagine that we have a separate last writer wins register for each element of the list and the content of that register is the position of that element. So let's say we have a, a register for the position of the phone Joe element. Replica A sets the value of that register to be head of the list, while replica B sets the value of that position register for phone Joe to be after the by milk element. And then as these two registers converge, their states, we pick one of them, the one with the higher timestamp usually arbitrarily, as the merged outcome. In this case, head of the list is the merged outcome. So this is nice now. We can construct this move operation using a last writer wins register. Um, now we have to make this a little bit more technical. Now the first thing we need here is some way of describing positions in the list. Here I've just this, done this informally with after by milk. Really what we need is some stable way of referencing positions in the list. But that problem has really been solved for us because all of the list CRDTs, regardless of whether it's tree doc or logout or causal trees or anything, they have some stable way of generating identifiers that refer to particular positions in the list. And those, uh, those identifiers are stable in the sense that unlike list indexes, they don't change if insertions and deletions happen around them. Um, so this means now we can put one of those position identifiers into as the contents of our last writer wins register and that now gives us a clear way of referencing the position of a particular list item. The second thing we need now is well we need one of these last writer wins registers for each of the list items. So for the list as a whole we've got a set of list items that appear in some order. We need a register for each of them. So let's just pick a set CRDT. Take an adwin set for example and inside the adwin set we put pairs. Each pair corresponds to a list item where maybe uh, the first part of the pair, the value is the text uh, on that list item like phone Joe. And the second part is the last writer, wins, last writer wins register containing the current position of that particular list item. And so now you can still add and remove list items just by adding and removing from the add win set. Uh, you can update the position of list items by, um, by updating the register for each of these list items. And if you want, to uh, find the list of items in the, in the set in a, in a particular order, in the order in which they appear in the list, then you need to follow the values of those registers and put them in the corresponding order. So what we've done here is now we have constructed a new CRDT by composing some list CRDT, it doesn't matter which one we use, any of them will work, any list CRDT with an adwin set and a last write wins register, and we've obtained a new list CRDT in which we can atomically move list elements. Hooray! So, are we finished? Well, I'm going to make it a step harder for us still. And so, to make it a bit harder, so far we've considered only moving a single list element at a time. What if we want to move not just a single list element, but a whole range of list elements in one go? This might happen in text editing, for example. So let's say we have a text document containing a list of bullet points. Bullet points say, firstly, bacon, secondly, milk. 
And now replica B here in this example wants to take the milk item and move it in front of bacon, while concurrently replica A edits the text of the milk item and changes it to soy milk by deleting the uppercase M and inserting the words soy and then the lowercase m. And so on each replica individually, we've got the outcome we expect. So on replica A, we've got bacon and soy milk. On replica B, we've got milk and bacon. Well, and now we want to merge them together. And what will happen? Well, we can use the algorithm described previously in which we can move a single list item at a time. And so here we're just going to move the range of elements by moving each item individually. So each character individually can be moved to a new position. And what we want then is really this outcome here. What we want is a, a final list, to-do list, in which soy milk appears first and bacon appears second. Now, if we use the algorithm described previously, unfortunately, this is not what happens. What we get instead is that, well, milk is moved in front of bacon. That happens correctly. But the edits that change, soy milk, no, change milk to soy milk, they remain attached to the old position of milk because, you know, the CRDT edits are attached to position identifiers. The position identifiers don't actually change their relative ordering. And so now what we end up with is firstly milk, not soy milk, then bacon, and then soy M stranded as this random uh, piece of text at the bottom of the list. That is not really great. I've been trying quite hard to fix this, and so far I have not succeeded in finding an algorithm that will allow moving ranges of elements in such a way that we can still perform concurrent edits on the contents of those ranges and have the whole thing merge in a way that is expected. So maybe some of you fine folks at PAPOC can think about this and see if you can come up with a way, but uh, I have not been able to solve that, so it's still an open problem. Thanks very much for listening.